Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I hope you've been enjoying the League Fest videos we've been putting up. Those competitive throwbacks from the kid. Putting me back in my element, you know, on the comms, try hard, all that stuff. It's been a lot of fun. But yeah, this next video is going to be from the second match of the last day of League Fest. There's only two matches left. Shit's winding down. It's down to the wire, but I hope you guys enjoy it. And the premise for this game was assassins, just full assassins versus assassins. So basically... The community voted on a, a certain role, and all the people had to pick champions from that role. So you're in for a treat, guys. I hope you enjoy. Um, but yeah, guys, if you if you like this video while you're watching, then please be sure to hit that like button. If you have if you have not already, please be sure to subscribe to get the latest plays right from my oven to your doorstep. And guys, let's get an intro squad in the comments. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. I'll see you on the next video. Peace. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to League Fest here. It's day three, and we're starting to get to the pointy end of things here in the Pro-Am competition. If Project can win these next two games, both of them, they're actually going to win here. So that's exactly what's at stake. Got to get things right. Now, in this game, we're not going to be seeing tanks. We're not going to be seeing mages. We're not going to be seeing marksmen. We are going to be seeing assassins. It's only going to be assassins, and teams may even try and counter pick each other with assassins. I don't really know if that works or not. Will we see some of the classic solo queue double target and spot lane cheese with assassins that gives you nightmares, or will we see something a little bit different? There's only one way to find out. We're going to get this one started, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise here for our second last game of the weekend. So a while ago, there was uh, some Reddit threads about who has played the most of a particular champion. In well, the I'm going to interrupt you there, Excoundrel, because we are on to the Summoner's Rift. It's League Fest Day 3. It's the second game of the day, and it's Project's last chance to keep themselves in this matchup. No, I'm finishing my anecdote. No. Nope. No, I'm finishing it. Up until about five minutes. They're looking for a dive. I mean, Kaelin spent a long time in this top side. Kevin does have his flash available, so can get away. And that Twilight Shrive to try and keep himself alive. No tower aggro taken here by Project Kevin. Perhaps a slight bit early on that Twilight Shrive. He's going to turn on towards Kaelin. The TP coming in as well. And now we'll see the flash away. Kaelin's going to fall. It's a one for one trade. TP cancelled. And it's first, uh, one of the kills going across towards either team there. Of course, first blood was on the odd one. Boyboy's going to jump in oh onto Lars and he's got the ignite! What Boy was Boy that? takes the kill with the ignite in the mid lane. Arcade slightly behind in this game. Of course, Project need to win it to stay in League Fest, to stay in the Pro-Am tournament. And Boy Boy, with his first blood, picked himself up a Negatron cloak. What a ridiculous, I still, still really the outplay. It was a very good outplay, especially with the use of Ignite. Just absolutely knew he had the, the damage needed there to take out, um, to take out Larson. He was trying to avoid the, the W, though. He obviously trying to avoid the empowered awesome. auto attack. Right, the Nether Blade. Yeah, yeah, the Nether Blade. He was trying to avoid the before in, uh, empowered auto attack from Larson because that can be absolutely devastating against other, other melee champions in the mid lane. Yeah. But um, it, it's still a very difficult matchup. Ooh, the the odd one's going to walk into Voivoy and Kalen here. He needs to try and retreat. Voivoy looking to see if he can do anything. Old one will know that they're around, but he thinks it's only Voivoy for the time. Now he'll know there are two members there. Odd one still no flash. Here comes Joker in the biz. He's going to try and get on towards the Katarina. Exhaust. To Oddwood. Parallel conversions comes down as well, and Joker isn't trying to run for the hills. Lamination will fall. Voivo picks up two, and this Katarina is starting to go off. But also the fact that he's mainly facing up against a large portion of magic damage output. Even Akali, who looks like she's building, well, yeah, maybe towards that. Um, what she's building towards? Maybe haunting guys. Haunting guys, guys yeah. Could be. Take a bit of pain in the middle lane. Kalen's going to try and chase him down with the hate spikes. Will the red buff be enough? Yes, it will. And Project seven kills to two up. Only seven minutes in. You made the point for me. Um, it, because sieging will be so hard in oh, this scenario. Oh, Larson jumps into Ruxton Kalen. He'll get locked up and he'll get taken down. Boy Boy is on a rampage. He is back where he belongs on that Katarina. Using that Rift Walk meant he was able to get locked up by Kalen. Which is why I like the Rebond pick up by the way. How low conversions does come down. They're going to try and dive Lemonation. He will fall and now Project are running for the hills because Kevin has joined the fray. He'll jump in but get exhausted straight away. Jumps into the Triax Shroud. will jump back onto Boy Boy. But it's three kills for one in favor of Project. It looks like they're going to be joined as well by Larson. He's going to see if he can do much here. Jokerism has joined the fray. Going to jump onto Rux. Here comes the death mark from Maple Street. Going to see if he can take down Larson. Does get some damage onto Jokers and will jump away though. And Project get away, losing only one kill. And I have to say, I think Rux has done a much better job in the early game of roaming around. Yes, you have that LeBlanc and it's a bit easier to do it. Odd One's actually going to pop the high master here to see if he can chase on towards Kalen. Boyro's around the corner though, and Odd One's going to get melted away. Death Lotus by Boyro. He's going to get the reset. 
not going to jump back in, decides to jump her away. Teleport cancelled out by Divus. Something that Voidboy does that I think a lot of Katarina players don't often realize is he actually doesn't use Shampo to then go into Death, Death Lotus. Yeah. He actually takes the approaching enemy and forces them to either walk into his Death Lotus or not. So then he could then use Shampo afterwards to get the kill. Odd One has really taken a beat down here. He's actually had not even finished his jungle item, has had to go straight towards where maybe he could have been to be. Boy, boy, jump there. He says he doesn't use the jump in. He's going to pick up another kill on this Katarina. Lemonation trying to do what he can, but he's got no damage at all on that Rengar. And Boy, boy will be able to get himself away. There is a mid lane turret falling in favor of Boy, boy. Divers will chrono break back and try and keep himself alive. The other one's going to chase onto Boy, boy. There's the exhaust. He chases him with the Alpha Strike. Can he get the damage down? There's the Smite as well, trying to skirmish his way to victory. They will jump in. Death Mark. Boy, boy falls, but, but he gets the will kill. down as well. A one for one trade for Boy, boy. And Kaelin and Maple Street are trying to turn the tide. There's the Agnes in base, they'll jump on towards Larson. TP coming in as well from Divus. He's already gone back to base, so he will be full HP and will be able to join this fight. Lamination has nowhere to go. Kalen will hate spike him down, will be able to chase the Rengo out. And there is the kill for him. 17 kills to five in favor of Project. They're looking to keep themselves in this Pro-Am tournament. Obviously, these guys know how to deal with Akali. Pink Ward's really put uh, basically the dagger in the side here for Akali. She finds it very difficult to uh, function in team fight, especially with the Pink Ward's on Joker Joker is jumps in. Boy, we will get knocked up by the Chum the Waters. But here comes the Death Lotus. He's looking for the reset. Kevin's there. There's one. Can he get another? He's used the Zonias. But Kevin's still alive here. Boy, boy will fall. Kevin uses the tri Twilight Shroud effectively to keep himself alive. Oh, it was so close to Void by getting multiple resets there, but it did allow this tier two turret to go down. This gold lead extending to 10k at 18 minutes. Project just absolutely steamrolling here in this Assassins versus Assassins matchup. Kalen pretty tanky already. He's only got a Ruby Crystal. Expect him to build towards that Rhylite. Of course, Dyrus pseudo tanky as well because he can get that health back. The They're going to get on towards Kalen. Larson's here as well. Rox has joined the fray. Kalen just about surviving for now. Here comes the death mark on towards the backside. Larson has to rift walk his way away. They have taken down the Evelyn, but Kevin not in a good position at all. Rux will take him out, and it's a one for one trade. Going to be Ludens for Rux first as well. So big spike. Oh, Elimination might die to the ignite. He does. Voivo picks up one. Is going to try and get away. He gets healed, but no. Larson takes him out. Not quite able to get away from that castle. They're going to look for the chase here onto Maple Street. Dyrus still pushing in another lane. Maple Street will fall, but Dyrus will get a free turret out of it all. Right now, you're in this mid game. This is where you're seeing Project thrive. You've already got loads of magic penetration coming through on Boy Boy. So any resistances in terms of that Aegis and everything being built up, it's starting to be less and less. Caitlyn going in there. Caitlyn is looking for the chase on towards Lemonation. He's got nothing at all. Double TP coming in. Odd one trying to escape. The Chum of Waters was used to slow down Caitlyn, but here comes Maple Street. Jokerism gets wiped off the face of the Rift, and Odd one will be chased down. Divers should be able to take this kill along with Boy Boy Kaelin and Rux. No escape for the odd one. He tries to alpha strike away, but Boy Boy will take him down. And only two members of Arcade left alive to try and defend this top inhibitor turret. This is something that happens in assassin matchups. If you have the ability to make a chase because of how mobile pretty much every assassin is, you can consolidate very quickly. Rux has not had enough though. He's gonna jump onto Kevin, catch him out in the Twilight Shroud, and there's a lot of AoE coming down from Project. Boy Boy gets his 11th kill of the game. They're gonna look towards the inhibitor turret. If they can take this down, it breaks the base of Arcade, and they can look towards the push. Lemonation pops the ult to see if they can get anything out of it. Fizz is coming up as well, Larson off towards the side. Now Lemonation will get jumped on by Project, and he is dead. Boy Boy there with the resets if he wants to go on to Jokerism. They're still looking for this inhibitor and should be able to take it down. Larson comes in the side, but he's dead as well. It's one by one by one that Arcade are falling, and it looks like we might be approaching game over for this Arcade squad. Yeah, absolutely. If it was in the platform, they'd be falling off every single time. It's 33 kills to 11. Three times the kills. Not quite three times the gold, but a substantial lead here for Project over Arcade. Divus jumps in, Chrono breaks back. The odd one, the target. Kalen's here as well at the moment. It's parallel convergence. But Maple Street's coming in. The parallel will knock up Kevin and Jokers, and he tries to jump away. But Project say, no, you cannot get away from us. They'll take down Kevin. They'll take down the odd one. They'll take down the triple. And they'll take down what looks to be their second inhibitor turret of the game. It doesn't really have the items that you would see to burst out Kastin, he's gone for Abyssal Scepter as well. And the fact that Kastin is known as the Anti-Mage because his ability to shield up against magic damage. But we have an engage coming yeah. through. 3v3 at the moment, but Maple Street joined the party as well. Voivod will take down one, he's gonna look for the resets. Kaelin on Jokerism, Voivod gets a double. He's gonna jump onto Jokerism in just a second as well. There we go, Kaelin actually taking down the kill. The Nexus turrets are the target 14 project. 
it looks like they're going to keep themselves in this Pro-Am tournament. Odd one trying to distract them as much as he can. He will pop into that Meditate. Actually takes down Void where he's going to look for two. Kalim doesn't have much mana. Odd one gets two kills and now Divers the target. Odd one will get stunned up though and now Larson having to defend versus three members of Project. Divers and Maple Street are going to look towards the Nexus. What can Larson do? I don't think it's much as he gets taken down. Project will take the Nexus and they'll keep themselves in the game. We're going to the final game of League Best. Absolutely is nothing is certain now here for these two teams. It comes straight down to this blind pick, the 200 point bonanza that we have as the final game of the day. Either team, if they take a win, will take the 10,000 pound prize pool. Monster will get caught away. Larson jumps in, Monster will actually knock it back, and he will fall, and here comes Kevin from the side. Kaden gets taken. Diamond's going to be mad, and Monster is in the midst of the wall as well. Oh, Monster's still going. Said that too many times on stream, but <laughs> that definitely deserved it. What a good pickup by Boy Boy.